Hello everyone, I am Charmaine Noel and I want to take this opportunity to invite you to attend my e-college. We will have topics such as spiritual leadership, the book of Genesis, the gospel of Matthew, prophetic praise and worship, prophecy for today, as well as pulpit ministry and much more. You will have an opportunity to have access to an e-library with well over 100 teachings, as well as an in-depth teaching of the book of Revelation. Click the link in the description and you will be in this e-classroom at your own convenience or live. We welcome you. Visit our social media or you can contact 1-868-303-2880. We welcome you. Hello everyone and welcome to our Sunday service. Well, I want to say to you, those of you who have tuned in, you're ready and you're waiting and, you, and you've already tuned in, as usual, please share, share, share. And I'm going to ask you to share, and you know every week I would ask you to share the message. But in particular this week, I'm going to ask you to share because this particular message is very heavy on my heart. It is a one where the burden of prophecy is upon me. It is a one where I pray that as the word, as the prophetic word is released, that it will break down walls of discomfort, walls of spiritual blindness. And I'm saying, to, I'm saying this to you with all humility in my heart as I release the word of the Lord to you today. It is the spirit of the Lord that has given me this word today. It has nothing to do with my own feelings on a matter. It is the Lord that is, that is speaking through a vessel directly directly to you and this is why in particular i'm asking that you share this particular message get as many people on as possible i want to be sure that we're all that we're all ready uh, to receive today's a message we are we are uh, sitting nobody's lying down we're all sitting we're all alert we are ready to take notes because not only is it a word that is prophetic it is a word that will bring teaching to us and hopefully it will bring understanding for us in seasons to come because this particular season that we are in come on the season we are in is a page turner but it is the beginning of the chapters of a massive book that is going to come and it's going to come, uh, it's going to unfold uh, for the next couple decades. And uh, so I need us to really take this, uh, you know, with all the seriousness as I can possibly release it to you. Okay, so share please as much as possible. You know, it is a time, this is the, 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 the time when we come to the continuation of the mapping out of coordinates because this is the part two of the strategic alignment that we began to speak about last week and it is the mapping out of the coordinates that is given in the word of the lord so that we the servants of god that we will not find ourselves in a place where we are unsuccessful and where the enemy is successful in taking our mind you see that's the direction i'm going in today because it is a time for us to respond and not a time for us to react it is a time where god wants to bring about order and destroy disorder it is a time of the perfect alignment in particular of, of when it comes to our relationships yeah that's the direction that the Lord would have us go today you see we are dealing with the mind and we are dealing with relationships this is why I told you it is critical right now that you share this particular message okay and so the Lord has me uh, uh, gave me a download of uh, things that are that are happening literally in people's minds and I said my God my God Lord how do we get how do how do we get to the for the for the people to have an understanding of this and it really brought a little bit and and, and please a little bit of apprehension and a fear uh, because Lord give me the uh, give me the unction today to even bring this particular word and so father right now in the name of Jesus I ask holy one 
Lord, that you will speak through this servant today. Father, let every word that is spoken, let it be from the throne of God. Lord, even as I speak, Lord, let it pierce hearts, let it touch lives, let it transform souls in the name of Jesus. Lord, let it open the eyes of the blind, let it unplug the ears of the deaf today, let it cause people who are deviating from the highway of holiness uh, to return to the path, the straight and narrow road, Father, in the name of Jesus. And the Father in it, God, we will give you the glory honor that you truly deserve in Jesus name amen well today we want to get to spiritual maturity I don't know anybody who does not want to everybody would want to uh, believe that they are better today than they were yesterday every single person and you know to get to that place of maturity we have forgotten one part. Every single one of us, and including myself, we have forgotten where the finish line is. And the Lord began to speak to me. He says, you've got to know what your finish line is. And, and this is where we are coming to the place where the Lord wants to reveal to us. You see, the problem with us is that we don't know to prove a spiritual maturity. It can only be proven by interpersonal relationships. It is how we relate with others that will prove that we have become spiritually mature. No, no. It's not how well we are in large crowds. It's not how well we relate to the multitudes. Because the multitudes can look at us, those who are uh, our acquaintances or those who are strangers to us. They can look at us and find that we are so good and we are so holy and we are so wonderful. But these are strangers. These are multitudes. It is are not in that area that will determine if we are spiritually mature because they would assume that we are because of how we can pray because of how we can expound the word of God that does not determine spiritual maturity we would want to pat ourselves on the shoulder and think hey we have reached somewhere because doors are opening opportunities are coming for us to do this do this and do that but that does not determine spiritual maturity today the Lord wants to break barriers he wants to open eyes and he wants us to understand where we are you see what is the true test of growth what is the true test to get us in this time of translation that has begun in the month of July prophetically you have to understand what I am saying today prophetically it has begun in the month of July from the month of July the Spirit of the Lord is saying that everything is going to change again there is another shift that is about to take place there is another paradigm shift shift there is another page turner things are going to be different as it will and in order for us to, fo to fall in a line where the Lord wants us to get into translation where we are all together in what God has to do we have to understand the growth that the Lord is taking taking us into in order for us to get to that growth it will be according to our emotional integrity in the home you see we like to assume that that our integrity is what everybody out there will see no our integrity has has a little to do with what everyone would see and much to do what is going on in the home oh you didn't hear what i just said there and the, so the question today that we are asking is that are we being brainwashed externally and that external brainwashing it's affecting our internal environment it's affecting what's happening in our home it's affecting our own personal life and preventing Preventing us from getting into perfect alignment according to the timing of God. I say to you again, God has a timing. Do not think, do not think it's strange that in January 2020, there was a warning of the pestilence that was about to come. Do not think it's strange that in January 2020, that the Lord said that there was going to be, <coughs> excuse me, a mad rush of the of the a mad rush of the pharmaceutical industries to ensure my god that there is some sort of cure there's a remedy or there's something that will <clears throat> that will that will alleviate the pandemic or bring it down uh, to a place according to the timing of god do not think it's strange that the lord said 
in the month, I believe it was me, that he said it was at the end of the second quarter of 2021 that we will begin to see, my God, that we will begin to see a shift as it were in the, in the, in the area of the pandemic, that we will begin to see a shift in the area of the economies of the world, that we will begin to see. In other words, from July, August, September, there's something that is going to begin to change and it is going to happen at that time. And do not think it's strange that the Lord said in January 2020 that it is going to happen because of something, a natural thing that the Lord would allow to happen because of the pharmaceutical industry. Listen, this thing was spoken of before anything took place in the natural. Do not think it's strange that the Lord ensured that he spoke before a matter lest something comes after and will prevent us from seeing and understanding prophetic words when they come to pass. This is not what I intended to say, but my God, the Lord is speaking right now. The title of today's message is emotional brainwashing. Now you have to write down everything I say. Listen, I pray today. This is why I'm saying to you by the spirit of the living God, my God, if you believe anything to do with the prophecy, if you believe anything that has to do with the word of God and the, and the manifestation of the rainbow word, I pray that you tune in today. I pray that you really receive what the Lord has to say and, and allow your, your closed mind to be opened up and be willing to receive and hear what the Lord is saying today. Now, our posture prepares us for promotion. You see, it is our posture that will prepare us for what God has to say and what God is doing in the timeline that he is doing it. So my, my word to you today is to change your posture. We have to change our posture. Our posture has to be with our face or flat down uh, on, on the ground. You see, it is only then because so many of us are on what? Social media, social media, social media, reading this, reading that. Our posture needs to be on our face to the ground. That's where we need to be right now. My God. And so the Lord says change your posture because there is a manifestation of the lying spirit that has been released released upon the earth that has been spoken of us since January 2020 that has been released and let me tell you something there are four areas that the enemy that lying spirit listen to me very carefully there are four areas there are four areas that he's targeting there are four groups of people that he's targeting right now one is the insecure group those who are insecure those who are unsure of what it is should I shouldn't die do I believe this about myself or, should I do? or am I listening to an external force about what the enemy is saying about me that's the insecure group there are those who are questioning prophetic words and let me say this to you. No, don't tell me anything about test the spirit. Of course we test the spirit. But what happens after you test the spirit? And the spirit, the prophetic word has been tried and proven. What happens after you test the spirit? And it has been tried and proven. And it has come to pass. And it has come to pass. And it has come to pass. What is happening is that those who are questioning prophetic words, that group, my God, there's a gap that is opening for emotional brainwashing to come in. There's another group. There's a group with a spirit of suspicion. You see, it's one thing to be suspicious about things, and I have no problem with pe people being cautious. Cautious is okay. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with being cautious. Come on, you don't want to go at the edge of a, a cliff and not be cautious on a matter. There's nothing wrong with that. But there is a difference between being cautious and being suspicious. Because what happens is a spirit of suspicion suspicion comes in and it becomes a very dangerous then because when a spirit of suspicious come 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 in emotional brainwashing becomes an easy way for the enemy to speak to us and block out prophetic words we ignore the prophetic words that come from heaven and we receive willingly the words of the spirit of suspicion and the fourth one my god is gullibility when we become a person who is a gullible for everything other than the word of god or oh, i listen to this or oh, it has to be that I listen to that it has to be this and we begin we begin to be gullible let me tell you something there are, those are four areas and, and suppose you come now and you say well prophet mom I'm not any of those I'm not I'm not insecure I'm sure about who I am in Christ I don't question the prophetic words I test the spirit I'm not a person who is suspicious I'm a cautious person rightly so 
I'm not a person who is gullible. I line up everything with the word of God. You're one of those. And then, and then the Lord would say, listen, and the Lord would say, listen, you, you are one, especially you. You are one who's very easy uh, to be targeted by the enemy. You know why? Because your confidence is in yourself and not in God. You know, that's how the Pharisees were. And I'm not, listen, I'm not, I'm not dissing anybody. I'm here to say to you, we have to do something, some introspection right now. Because there is something that the enemy is doing and putting wool over too many people's eyes right now. And all the time I've been speaking between the lines, I've been trying to hold back. And the Lord began to speak to me. And he said, today, 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 begin to speak to the people. Because there are things that they don't understand understand they don't understand what I am doing and why I am doing certain things my God because there is a season that will come when you have to be able to discern whether this is of God or this is of the devil and this is my God just a preamble of what is going to come and the Lord began to speak to me you see here's here's the word Many of us will find ourselves, you know, in Matthew chapter 24, uh, verse 24, the, the Lord uh, says, you know, that the very elect can be deceived. The very left, you know, can be deceived. And, and here's my thing. There were false prophets and false teachers out there who were doing this, uh, lying signs and wonders to the point where if it were possible for the very elect to be deceived. Let me ask you a question. Can the very elect be deceived? The very word to be deceived is emotional brainwashing. The very word, uh, uh, you know, emotional brainwashing means to be led astray. That's what we are talking about here. Can the very elect find themselves being led astray and my answer is absolutely it has it has happened from since the beginning of the church of Jesus Christ and it's happening to today the the issue is that the Lord is so faithful that he will always make a way of escape he will always provide a way of escape that we will not find ourselves caught up in the web of deception to the point where we sin to the point where we fall so far away we cannot return to the highway of holiness and we thank God for that and that is why this particular message, the part two of this message of strategic alignment, this part two message of emotional brainwashing is so critical. And this is the reason I said that you must share. Because if I were to tell you right now, let's, uh, let's address this on an individual level. Let's address emotional brainwashing firstly before we go anywhere else. Let's address it on a personal level. How many of us have a, an external force saying, that we can never get out of this financial matter that we're in. That the business that we have, it has to close down. How many of us are there? How many of us are, are in a, a, you know, you have a physical condition. And you're hearing a voice that says, you can never find yourself coming out of this. You have hypertension, diabetes, whatever your issue is. And you can, you can never come out of this condition. How many of us are, are finding that we are, we, are, we are literally agreeing, we are coming in agreement with, with different voices that are saying we could never find ourselves coming to a place where there's healing in the marriage, where there's healing in relationships, interpersonal relationships. We are finding ourselves coming to the place where I could never be happy. I, 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 could all, always, I always find myself lonely and alone. And we, we settle with that and we, we literally allow an external voice, an external force coming and speaking to us. Well, I'm here to say to you, that's emotional brainwashing on a personal level. And so if we could allow and come in agreement with emotional, come on, if we could come in agreement with this emotional brainwashing on a personal level, what happens when it becomes on a larger scale? We fall easily into the prey of the enemy. This is why we have to pray and pray and pray. And that's why the Lord told me from the beginning, posture, watch your posture. And so the word is emotional posture. What is your emotional posture right now? What is your posture? Because we have, we have to begin by doing emotional exercises. Listen to every word and every phrase that I'm saying to you right now. Because every phrase and every word is prophetic. There are emotional exercises exercises that we must as a church the church and the body of Jesus Christ I'm not speaking today to the uh, to anyone else but the church church listen to me today we have to engage right now in emotional exercises because the emotional exercises will be that which will protect us against brainwashing
Oh no, you didn't hear me. The emotional exercises will be that which will protect us against brainwashing. There is a strengthening and acuteness that will happen to us that will bring our brain to be so acute that when the brainwashing looks to come, we know from afar off what it is. We are guarded from afar off what it is. The spirit of discernment will be so accurate that we will not be, we will not be fooled by the enemy. But let me say this to you right now now it has to be an exercise that we are allowed to, to, to engage in and I'm gonna go there shortly you know the scripture there's a scripture let me go let me go with the first scripture let me go with the first coordinate the first coordinate is Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 Hebrews chapter 4 verse, verse 15 sorry and this is the our compassionate high priest here's what it says for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin and the key word here is sympathize and we are looking at the word sympathize with this in this message that we are t we are talking about here because sometimes in the hebrew as well as the greek they will sum up an emotion in just one word whereas the English language will take it and dissect it and break it up into many different tributaries with sub words and sub meanings and when we look at that one for example let me give you let me just give you an example quickly two examples in the Hebrew the word nefesh in the Hebrew in Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 the life of of the flesh is in the blood that word alive means the soul it actually means the heart and the mind now for us in the English language the heart speaks of our emotions the mind speaks of our thinking our rational thinking and so we go here with the heart and there with the mind but in the Hebrew the heart and mind are one it's the nefesh it speaks of your soul it speaks of your life your very existence in the same way in the Greek when it says needs and wants we know in the in the English when we speak about our need we speak about you need water you need food come on you need clothing these are these are needs these are basic and needs and when you speak about wants we are talking about well I want a vehicle I want a brand new home those are wants and we think about that you know in the English language that day but but do you know do you know in the in the Greek and it's also in the Hebrew in the Greek it is looked at as one thing Philippians 4 4 19 is the word is uh, clear okay and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus that word need also means want and so we find where we find where in the in the Hebrew and the Greek they will use one word and the one word has the same meaning but in the English language is broken up so when we are reading the scriptures and we are reading something in, in our English language we assume that's what it means when in fact we've got to go into the original language and find out because the word sympathize the word sympathize it does not mean the word sympathize for us it is not the same meaning as how we are in the, in the English would look at the word sympathize and so I'm going to go into detail about that and before I go into it I'm going to give to you very very short right now I'm going to give you five areas of emotional intelligence that has to be applied that will block or prevent the enemy from coming in to give us emotional brainwashing you want to be prevented oh rabbi come on come on the anointing is very strong on me right now you want to not engage in emotional brainwashing because I am not even just speaking about your own personal work I'm not just speaking about how you feel about yourself and how your enemy is speaking to you and you keep looking with your head down in my God rather than NASA and looking you know looking from a heavenly perspective on a, mat a matter not lifting up your body not lifting up your eyes lifting up your hands instead of that you're looking down and you're, you're depressed on a matter no 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 listen to me it goes far beyond that you know 
Because this is on not just a national level, this is on an international level because the lying spirit has been released globally. Remember I said that the spirit of the Lord spoke, sorry, pervasive propaganda. And so here's the point that I'm making here. There are five areas of emotional intelligence that will guard and protect your soul from the enemy coming in to, to allow brainwashing, emotional brainwashing that will prevent you from receiving the prophetic word when we are not able to receive a prophetic word that comes directly from heaven do you know what happens we fall prey to the enemy oh my god emotional intelligence protection against brainwashing number one the first one we want to talk about is emotional acuity that's that that first one actually last night i was just quiet before the lord and you know i said lord just just speak to me what is it what is it that the people need and he said to me he said emotional acuity and emotional acuity is a knowing it's knowing and naming your feelings knowing and naming your feelings so that you are protected so you are prepared against that that uh, emotional uh, roller coaster that you would find yourself in those 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 emotions that will cause you to deviate from the perfect will of god knowing and naming your feelings you know you know have you ever had an experience where something happens really badly and and you just you just don't bother to hear it. you don't want to address it you um, and mostly men do that but women also you just don't want to deal with it right now. And so you just cast it aside. You put it, you, you put it at the back of your brain as it will. Right? But instead, in emotional acuity, it says where you address, you ask yourself a question. How do I feel about this? Address the matter. How do I feel about what this person has, has done? How do I feel about what I have done in this matter? How do I feel about this situation? How do I feel about what's going on right now? How do I feel about my financial matter? Literally be honest with yourself. That's emotional acuity. It brings acuteness in your very brain. It brings acuteness in your soul as well. It is a guard against emotional brainwashing. Come on, you didn't even understand what I just said but I'm going to, I'm go, you're going to understand soon enough. The second one is a motivation. You know, there is something, uh, there's something with enjoying a life that we don't get. You see, we have to look at the glass half full rather than the glass half empty. The Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. And so motivation or self-motivation is something that is so important to get our brain, come on, to get our mind, to get our soul, to get our heart. Remember I said all of that is one. To get us in that place where we are guarded, where we are strengthened. It's literally doing emotional exercises. It is doing emotional exercises. When we do a physical exercise, we are strengthened in the natural. It is doing an emotional exercise that guards and protects that evil arrow of brainwashing to come our way. No, but you better hear me. And the other one is to regulate your emotions. What is regulating your emotions? And I think this one is so important. Regulating your emotions mean having self-control or restraint. Having self-control or restraint. Come on, regulate those emotions. You know, the, the problem with, with the people who are unable to regulate their emotions, the people who are unable to have restraints, self-restraint and self-control, when they have the outburst of anger, you know what happens every time there's an outburst of anger? There is a crack. There is a door. There is an opportunity for emotional brainwashing to come in. Or easily it can come in. And you know what is the most dangerous part of that? It is the fact that when you are emotionally brainwashed, you can't know. You don't know. You are deceived. And so you come to the place where you don't even know that this is what is happening with you right now. You think you're good. And you think everybody else has issues and you're good. It becomes a very, very dangerous place. And so the Lord says, have self-control. Come on, it's a fruit of the Spirit. Have self-restraint. Come on, get to that place 
that's where you are able to regulate your own emotions over a matter. And the, the fourth one is what I'm going to deal with, which is a managed relationships. The Lord is taking us to a place where it is less important to, to study what the masses think. It's less important to study what your friends or your, or your relatives think because there are three groups. There's the masses, they're the, they're the friends and relatives, and then there's your inner circle, whether your inner circle is your one best friend you have, your spouse, whoever, that inner circle. Listen to me. It's less important for all of them to, to know. To, to, to get into that place where, where you know, you, you are in that realm where God wants to really work in you. It's a less important. What is important is what you know about what God has said. You see, we are, so, we are so concerned about what everybody thinks. We are so concerned about what our friends or our relatives think. We are even concerned about what our best friend or spouse think. But the Lord wants us to get even beyond that. He wants us to be concerned with what he thinks concerning a matter. What has he spoken? Not what the social media says. Not what your friends say. Not what everybody is saying. It is what he has said. This is where he wants us to get. And this is where we have to manage our relationships because if we are able to get to the place where I'm about to go with the fifth point because managing relationships deals with the next point that I'm going to do it is the most important listen if I could say if there is one area in the entire Bible that is the most important area for us to engage in as the body of Christ it is this would you believe it is the most important. It is the apex of apex. And it is the fifth one is empathy. Empathy. The word is empathy. Empathy is that blood of Christ. Empathy is the cross of Christ. Empathy is what Jesus came on earth to do. Empathy. You see, the enemy... Of, brainstorm, of, of brainwashing cannot penetrate the blood. The enemy of brainwashing cannot penetrate empathy. He can penetrate everything else. He cannot penetrate empathy. And what is empathy? You see, let me, let me give you a scripture for empathy. It's another coordinate for you. Come on, let's go with the next coordinate. Romans chapter 12 verse 15 says, Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. That's the, that's the scripture. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. What does that mean? It means empathy literally means putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. Come on. How many of you read To Kill a Mockingbird? Yeah? It is putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. Empathy is the most difficult emotion of all emotions that exist on the earth. Because it is one where you actually either experience what they are experiencing tangibly or if you have never experienced it, if you have never experienced racism, it is difficult for you to empathize with a person who's experienced racism. If you've never experienced abuse of any kind, it is difficult for you to empathize with somebody who has experienced abuse. Come on, you better hear, hear what I'm saying. If you've never experienced a loss of a parent, you, it is difficult for you to empathize with somebody who's experienced the loss of a parent. And, but empathy goes beyond that. Because if you have experienced it, there is a way where the, there is a possibility for you to empathize with that person. But empathy goes beyond that to the point where you are able, literally, where you are able to get to the place where you feel what they feel. Write that down. Where you feel what they feel. Feel. The Bible says rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. That's not, those are not words that are used on the surface. That is a literal, tangible manifestation of an emotion called empathy. Where you feel what somebody else, is, uh, somebody else feels. And do you know, the only real way that we are able to do something like this is if we walk in unconditional love. The scripture says in 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 13, it says, but rejoice 
to the extent that you partake in Christ's sufferings. Ooh, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. And if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and God rest upon you. It is a literally sharing in somebody's joy and a sharing in somebody's sorrow. You are sharing in everything they experience. You are feeling what they are experiencing. And the only way you can really do that is when you also have life experiences that are similar. You know something? Let me say this to you. People who have not had much difficulty will find it difficult to have empathy. People who have not had much difficulty will find it difficult to have empathy. And so, you know, the, the, the example of, of facing, let me, let me give you a, a practical one. Here's the practical example of demonstrating empathy. So somebody calls you and says, you know what, let me tell you, this is a terrible thing that happened to me. I've faced this emotional matter, a serious matter has happened to me, and they are terribly distraught. What will you do to, to demonstrate empathy? To demonstrate empathy, you find yourself in a place where you don't speak about yourself at all. You don't say, well, you know what, I had a similar situation. But what you do is you listen attentively and you listen genuinely to that person. And above that, you don't give counsel or advice. You pray for the person. To demonstrate the ultimate empathy at that point in time. Because the person at that point just wants you to listen to them. They just want to know that they have somebody who genuinely cares about them. And when we want to throw something down someone's throat, yes, but you should have done this. And yes, but if you had done this this way, that's not empathy. Empathy is, you see, you see, when Jesus went on the cross, the, the word is whosoever. He didn't, he didn't lock people up and tell them, hey, you have to come and receive me. Come on. It is whosoever. Whosoever would receive the son will be saved. Whosoever. And so we have to get to that place of empathy because empathy, precious ones, is the ultimate, ultimate act of emotion that will block the enemy of engaging us in emotional brainwashing that has come not only in our individual lives, but has come upon the earth in the most horrendous way, as was foretold back in January 2020 of pervasive propaganda. It is now increasing, and that was also said. I, the word was it is going to increase, and it's going to increase, and it is going to increase, and we are finding it happening right now. Let me say something else, because the word that was used in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, that says sympathize because I have to explain it to you. The word is a sympatheo in the in the Greek. And we will say, hey, that's sympatheo. That means sympathize. And we will assume it means so because of the similarity of the sound of the word. But let me say to you again, the word sympatheo literally means, it means everything encompass what? It encompasses empathy, uh, sympathy, in, uh, mercy, pity, compassion, Kindness, all of that summed up in one is what sympatheo means. Literally, it literally, but I'm saying that not in the, in the English for us to understand. I'm saying it for you to understand it in the Greek because it literally means suffering with another. It literally means having compassion for another. It literally means to be touched with another. And so when you look at Hebrews chapter 10 verse 34, it says, for you had compassion on me in my chains or in my prison that word you had compassion means you suffer along with me and so it my god you see there are many people out who have a problem with suffering along with somebody else you see i love you and i care for you but i don't want to suffer along with you come on you're there with me you see if we if we could get to the place where we are willing to suffer along with somebody else who is suffering right now, then we are protected from being brainwashed. You know why? Because we have the ultimate, come on, act of, of unconditional love. And the ultimate act of unconditional love 
cannot ever be penetrated by the enemy. It is one thing he cannot get through. He cannot go beyond that. And so when we listen on news and when we listen on media and when we watch all of these things that are being, that are being told by this one and that one, it cannot penetrate our soul. It cannot penetrate our heart and our mind because we are walking in such unconditional love. The enemy cannot penetrate. The prophetic word will always stand. Because the very English word of sympathy is this. It means to have sorrow over somebody when something is happening. They lost, they have a loss, they lost their parents, they lost a spouse, they lost somebody, a, a sibling. It is having sorrow for somebody, but it's not actually feeling what they are feeling. That's the majority of us. Come on, raise your hand. Let's be honest. You have sorrow for what they are feeling. But it is the hardest thing to feel what they are feeling. You're sorry that they've had a lost one, uh, you know, a loved one who's lost. You're sorry that they had to go through this, they lost their job. You're sorry that they're experiencing this matter. But do you actually feel what they are feeling? No, that's sympathy in the English language. Are you there with me? And God wants us to go beyond sympathy. Because that's where we all are. We're in sympathy. You see, the way to protect ourselves from brainwashing, because why do you think the church is being so deceived? <laughs> you, you think the enemy is going to attack the world? The world is already lost. Who is he going to attempt to deceive in this season? Who is coming up against the prophetic word? The enemy is attacking the church, precious ones. He's attacking the church of Jesus Christ. It is the church, it is the mind of the church that he's coming up against. That's the direction he's going. He wants us to get in the place where we, where we feel so comfortable, where everybody else sees us as holy. But what's going on behind closed doors in our home is another matter. We feel we're okay that God is, it's almost as though God is blind to what's happening in our home. Listen, that is emotional brainwashing. We are being fooled by the enemy and we don't even realize it. Somebody needs to hear what I'm saying today. This part that I'm about to say is the most important. So you better get your pens, papers out ready. If you didn't press, if you didn't press share, you better do it now. Because this is the most important part of everything that I've said so far. Because we have to understand who are the enemies. Who's the real enemy? We have our multitudes, our, uh, the, the strangers, the, the acquaintances, the three groups. Like Christ did, like Christ, he went about, come on, doing good to the multitudes, not so? Then there's the inner group, the disciples. We have our family, our relatives, general relatives. We have friends around that we know. And then there's the inner core. We have that group. But then there's another group. There's another group of detractors, naysayers. A, a, a group that always stands at the side. They're not in our, they're not in our, our circle that we could see, but they're there. They're around. And it's only when they open their mouth. Come on. Come on, that, that serpent was in the garden all the time. How come Adam didn't see the serpent? The serpent was in the garden. As a matter of fact, Adam would have named that serpent. Serpent. How come he didn't know that there was something wrong there? You have to understand in the midst of what is happening, in the midst of everything, the enemy, listen, not the person, the enemy, the one who does engages in emotional brainwashing. He's the one who is going to come and he's going to do the work of the, of the, the work that, that he's assigned to do. These enemies of the works of God from the time of the Pharisees and the, and the scribes in the time of Christ, the same assignment then is the same assignment and now what is the assignment the assignment is to do to go against the very prophetic word of God they are the brainwashers of today they are the brainwashers of today you better hear what I'm saying let me tell you something God says there is a move there is a move and so they want to counter the move 
These people are not gossipers. No, no, no. They are more. Come on. The spirit is a not the gossip spirit. It goes far beyond the gossip spirit because the move is an absolute evil move. The intent is to steer people directly away from the prophetic move of God and from the prophetic word of God. And it will not be the world that will hear it. It will be the church that will hear it. The church is the one who's going to hear it. The church is the one who's going to forward it. The church is the one who's going to share it. It is the church who are going to be the one to be deceived. And listen to what I'm about to say. Because in the time when Paul the Apostle spoke to the people of, of the Galatians, the churches of Galatia, and he says, my God, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Who has fooled you? Because these Judaizers that came around, come on, these tricksters that came around, they were telling the people that they must engage in Jewish custom. They must engage in the, in the Mosaic traditions. You have to understand, why was Paul not given in to that? Why was Paul, why did he not listen to the Judaizers and say, wait a minute, maybe I didn't get it right. Maybe, come on, why was Paul the apostle? Why was he not one? Why did he not fall into that trap? You know why? Because Paul the apostle understood emotional intelligence. Paul the apostle understood the apex of empathy. Paul was exude empathy and he knew that empathy was the blood. It was the blood. It was the cross that would protect him from any deception, from any emotional detractors, from any, come on, from any emotional persons who will want to engage in brainwashing. He wouldn't fall into the trap of the, of the Judaizers. He stood against them strong. As the Lord would have me do today, because that which I'm about to say is coming up against the many in the body of Christ. Many who feel that they're big in Christ. Listen to me very carefully. Listen carefully. Listen. Religious interpretation of a natural act is different to spiritual or prophetic interpretation of a natural act. Oh my God. Hear me now, because this is the key. If you get this, you've gotten everything. And the enemy will not brainwash you. The enemy will not deceive you. Religious interpretation of a natural act is different from spiritual and prophetic interpretation of a natural act. Religious interpretation of a natural act is John chapter 9. When there is this man who is blind from birth, and the disciples asked Jesus, what is it? What sin did this man commit? What sin did his parents commit? That is a religious interpretation of a natural act. The man was blind. It's a natural act. But they looked at, a, they looked at it from a religious perspective. A spiritual or prophetic interpretation of a natural act. The natural act is the virus, COVID-19. It's a natural act. We have pandemics. We're in a world where there are pandemics in different seasons. There are pestilences, there are tornadoes, there are hurricanes. Oh, you're not hearing me. There are earthquakes. Come on, you're not hearing me. There are famines. We are in a world where these things happen. There are natural occurrences that happen. Rabakasi, somebody hear me. There are natural occurrences that happen. But there is a spiritual interpretation for natural events. What is the spiritual interpretation of it? Lord, what are you revealing to me about me in this situation? For you to allow this to happen. For you to say beforehand it was going to happen. For you to say that there is going to be a natural solution to it. And for you to also say that there is a timing. That there is a time when you're going to open the borders. For you to actually say there is the time when it was going to happen. Oh, you're not hearing me. My God, you have to understand that there is the time where we have to not go religious and come with a spiritual interpretation lord what is it you want to change in me because apparently i'm engaging in emotional brainwashing i'm giving in to the enemy the enemy does not want to fool the world the enemy wants to fool the church the enemy wants to fool the pastors the enemy wants to fool the apostles. The enemy wants to fool the teachers. He wants to fool the prophets. He wants to fool the evangelists. He wants the fivefold ministers to stand from pulpits and say, don't do this and don't do that. He, that's what he wants. 
He wants to go against prophetic words and be religious. The religious. Knowingly or unknowingly. And I, and, I, and, I, and I believe in my heart it's unknowingly. But the reason it is unknowingly in many, many times. It is because they don't have or we don't have empathy in our hearts. We are operating under sympathy. Oh, I feel so sorry for you. I'll pray for you, sister. I'll pray for you, brother. But you don't feel what they're feeling. You're not feeling what they're feeling. That's how the church is. We don't feel what people feel. And because we are just sympath we are sympathizing with them. And we're not engaging in empathy because the blood is empathy. The blood is empathy. The cross is empathy. Because of that, we are exposed to brainwashing. We are exposed to its sins. And there are too many of us in the body of Christ. So come on, give me an amen. No. Don't be silent on me here, you know. Don't be silent on me here, you know. Because I know that this, I know you know. I know that there's a conviction in your heart that that which I'm saying is the word of God. I know you know it's a rhema word. I know the things that you've been hearing, you're questioning it in your heart. The reason that you're questioning it and you're just going along with it, it's because the majority is saying it. The majority are the imitators of the translation move of God. The translation move of God is that we're supposed to go together, saints. The translation move, translation in maths mean together. It means one move. Come on, that's what translation means. Huh? It means a location shift. And so, if God wants us to shift the location of our mind, our mindset and our thinking, it has to begin here. We must be able to discern. And this next word, write it down. Write this down. We have to be able to discern, precious ones, the difference between the move of God and the move of the devil. Listen, we have to be able to discern the difference between the move of God and the move of the devil. The move of God is predictive prophecy, which releases liberty and blessing. The move of God is predictive prophecy which releases liberty and blessing are you there with me are you there with me it releases what liberty and it releases what blessing and it releases what healing that's what it releases three things liberty blessing healing the move of god predictive prophecy when god speaks a matter before it happens and you fall in line and you get into that jet stream and come on and you get into perfect alignment you get blessed you get free come on and you get healed all of that happens what's the move of the devil the move of the devil pervasive propaganda the move of god predictive prophecy the move of the devil pervasive propaganda and what is pervasive propaganda release pervasive propaganda release a uh, sickness it release uh, bondage and it release death It releases sickness, it releases bondage, and it releases death. That's the move of the devil. That's the move of pervasive propaganda. That's what the intent of the enemy is. He wants to get the people of God to say, no, 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 no. You see me? I'm not doing this. You see me? And you have the big shot pastors, and everybody's saying to do this, and everybody's saying not to do this. And I'm here to say to you, has God not spoken? Did he not say? Did he not let us know beforehand? Why are we questioning the word of God as opposed to some secular person? I'm closing, but before I close, I have to say something else. Before I close, I have to say this. Let me say this to you. You see the Lord Jesus, the Bible says he was moved with compassion. The many times when he went about doing good. The Bible says he was moved with compassion. Matthew chapter 9 verse 36. He was moved with compassion. And that particular word, you know, that particular word compassion, that word compassion, it's not the same word that we used in the beginning. Okay? It's not the word of empathy. That word compassion there was when he was dealing with the multitudes. So it speaks of pity. It speaks of having a feeling. It speaks of sympathy. So, so Jesus, when he dealt with the multitudes, that's how he felt about them. Yeah, he, he dealt with them at that level. He dealt with them at that level. Okay? And in the strategic alignment that we are in, we have got to go beyond that level. Jesus deliberately said it that way, you know. 
But when he came to the when he came to the point of his own personal life, when he came to the point of his 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 personal walk with his father, when he came to dealing with his his circle, listen, it was so crazy that it's not only not only the, the the masses, it was not only even his general disciples, it was not only even in the in the Mount of Transfiguration with his inner circle of Peter, James, and John, but it was his own personal walk with his father. It was in that own personal walk. What was his personal walk with the father? And people would ask, well, what is that personal walk? His personal walk with the father was his work on the cross. It was his unconditional love that demonstrated empathy. It was him and his father alone. It was him and his father that demonstrated empathy. You see, when we have that one and one with our father the enemy cannot cannot have any way enter our mind and get us to a place where we fall into the trap of the enemy you know and come off the course of the prophetic timeline of god you know how dangerous it is to fall out of the god's prophetic timeline it means you have to go around the mountain over and over again that's what happened to the children of Israel. They came off the prophetic timeline to the point where they never experienced it. It is a dangerous thing. You know, there's, there's, a, there's something that I said last week. And before I go, I want to repeat it. And then I'm going to give you practical things to do before we go. Because besides telling you in your soul the things that you must do to engage in emotional intelligence, to protect yourself against the brainwashing that is being released my God, to the point where I don't even understand what is happening with the people of God. Let, I'm going to give you some practical things to do as well. But before I do that, I want to, in the second part of this, this word of strategic alignment, I want to remind you of something that was said last week. Because this is a demonstration. This is a demonstration of engaging in empathy it is going from sympathy to empathy because sympathy is the prerequisite to empathy i said sympathy is the prerequisite to empathy don't just look to jump into empathy okay i'm going to do empathy no you've got to be sure that you understand what it is to have sympathy where you really do uh, have you feel sorry for that person my god you may not feel literally what they're feeling but you do have some sort of emotion when you have no emotion for them when you don't really care and you, and you just go wow that that means your your heart your conscience has become seared. That means your heart has become hardened. My God. And so here's what the, the Lord said uh, last week. I just have to repeat it for you. In John chapter 3 verse 30. Remember John the Baptist? He, he, he was speaking and he said, the Lord must increase while he, John, must decrease. Remember we said that last week? And, and I explained it to you in physics. How that is the demonstration of doing good. When John spoke of decreasing, the, the whole idea of decreasing literally means doing good. The whole idea of decreasing literally means uh, becoming a one who engages in work. So the, the, if we look at two people, so person A and person B. And person A gives positive energy to person B. Positive energy means uh, doing good means doing something it means exerting energy okay so when that person does good or exerts energy upon person b their energy decreases am i correct so if you are sweeping the floor if you're washing the dishes if you are cooking if you're cooking the food hint 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 to my household yeah praise god right so so if you person a or person c as it will Praise God. If you are doing, come on, amen, hallelujah. Can I get a laugh there? If you are doing all of these things and you are exerting positive energy, right? And you are doing good uh, for somebody else. What happens to you is that your energy goes down, correct? And uh, so you decrease, amen? And uh, so when John spoke about decreasing, he was uh, literally, if we look at it from a phys physics perspective, from a scientific perspective, it uh, literally means doing good so the more we 
exert energy. The more we exert energy upon a next person, come on, the more we decrease. My God, you understand that? And when we decrease, it's a manifestation of us doing good. When we do that and we continue to do good, what we will find ourselves is that we will go from the prerequisite of sympathy into empathy. If we could get to empathy, precious ones, then we can absolutely get to that place where we are protected from the emotional brainwashing that is happening around the world. Emotional brainwashing literally erodes your ability to think for yourself. Emotional brainwashing is something where the people would find that they take offense. Right now, some of you are taking offense because I'm saying certain things. Emotional brainwashing, people who are emotionally brainwashed will take offense to messages like this. And I'm praying right now that you don't take offense because your core belief system becomes eroded. Your very self-confidence become affected. Listen, your ability to receive genuine prophetic words become affected and instead you become, you listen to other words from, from the enemy and not realizing, listen, it's not, listen, I'm not speaking against men and women of God. You have to understand, I am saying the enemy is using the, the, the exact church to come up against the church. That's how he's doing it. Okay, so we must remember that the, the start of emotional brainwashing is toxic relationships. Remember we spoke about toxicity some time ago? Well, I guess what? The toxicity is still there. Because every time we get washed by the blood of, by the blood of Jesus and by the word of God, and we renew our mind, every time that happens, the, the brainwashing comes. And when the brainwashing comes, instead of us washing it away, we listen to it again. And that is the problem with us. And that is what has been happening. So let me give you quickly uh, some don'ts. Let me give you some things to do and don't as we close. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. And these are natural things I'm going to say. Don't follow the crowd. What has the Lord actually spoken? Don't follow the crowd. Don't ever go with the masses. You remember that's what happened with Jesus? The very masses. When Jesus was coming into Jerusalem and they waved their palms, everybody was so happy to see Jesus. Come on. It took just one week of brainwashing. It took just one week of emotional brainwashing for the very people to say crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. As a matter of fact, it was so large that the people in the back didn't know it was Jesus. They were saying crucify him too. They were just saying crucify him. That's the power of brainwashing, of emotional brainwashing. So be careful when you look to follow a crowd. Be careful when you look to follow what the masses are saying. And, and listen to the Lord yourself. Listen to what God has spoken. The second one is don't follow or believe the hype. Because the hype can become louder than the word of God. The hype can be louder than the rhema word. The hype can become louder than the prophetic word. And, and the word and the word that comes from the Lord becomes silenced. The word that comes from the Lord becomes so soft that you cannot hear what he's saying because there is hype and there is a, the continuous bombardment of, of, of a word that is being released because that's what brainwashing is. Huh? Brainwashing is the removal of what your core values are or what your core beliefs are into a, a bombardment of another belief system, into the bombardment of what somebody else perception of a matter is that is what it is you know it is a bombardment of information that is coming across to you to the point where you now even question what you believe anymore that is brainwashing the next one i'm only going to give you a couple a few look out for personal agendas there are people who are out there who are just out for popularity and the way that they will engage in the popularity is by, by picking this topic that is so good. And if they could pick a topic uh, such as what is happening globally with the pandemic, it, they become popular, they get more likes, they get more views, and you find yourself falling into, into that trap of it. The next one, don't believe all you've read, you've read, or see on social media. You know, I don't understand. How is it 
that people will look at the word, people will listen to prophetic word, and don't go with it, but go with what people say on social media. Oh, this person said this, and it has to be this. And let me tell you something. People are becoming so authentic. Uh, um, they, they seem to be authentic. They have it look, look as though, when you're watching them, it looks as though, you know, as though they're actually bringing news, you know. It looks, I've, I've, I've seen things that, that supposedly came from India. And it is absolute pervasive propaganda. There is no truth to it whatsoever. It's somebody who superimposed something to make it look real. I, I'm saying to you, precious ones, it is dangerous right now. There are, there are doctors who want popularity and saying things, and we have to literally be very cautious and be very careful in this time. And the, and the last one, do your own research. And not by people with personal agendas. Do your own research. Or not by this one person who says this. Do your own research. Oh, I found somebody who says this. No, that's not doing your own research. It's getting to the original. Do your own research. And listen to the prophetic word of God. Because the Lord says, engage in emotional intelligence. Engage in spiritual acuity. Engage in empathy. Do these things here. And when you do this, you are protected by the blood of Jesus. Against emotional, uh, emotional brainwashing. You become protected. The enemy cannot fool you anymore. Come on, come on, lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus. Right now, Father God. Lord, I lift up every single one under my voice. Father God, no longer shall we find ourselves in that place where we are as the elect finding ourselves in a place of deception that as the elect we are finding ourselves in a place of emotional brainwashing my god father lord let it be father god that you are protecting us by your blood you are protecting us god and you are doing it father by our interpersonal relationships that you are looking to see if we have matured by how we relate with one another in the home because spiritual maturity oh god the the, the manifestation my God of spiritual maturity is how we engage with one another in the home not how we look in front of others but how we engage with one another in the home and that's how we know we have come to a place God where we are able to be definitely guarded by that spirit of emotional brainwashing and so father right now help us to be mature today do whatever you need to do Lord that we will come to that place where we are able to ascend upon your helix where we are able to ascend upon the, the cycle of Christ. Father, today, each one, touch, touch, touch. Open our eyes. Lord, we repent, for, Father, if, if we have gone astray, if we have found ourselves, Lord, in a selfish manner, if we have come to a place of selfishness rather than selflessness, we repent right now in the name of a Jesus. Lord, open our eyes to see. Unplug our ears to hear. Help us, Father God, that we will walk on the street straight and narrow road that we will walk on the highway of our holiness God and our Lord if we were going down the wrong path Lord steer us back on course into perfect alignment Father God and we will obey the prophetic word of God Lord as, as it is tested and has been tried and as it has been proven we shall obey the prophetic word of God and not move God on our own emotionalism and so Father we thank you Father God that in the time of the page turner in the time of this new season you are going to do something amazing in the next three months you are going to do something amazing in the foot by the first quarter of 2022 there is an explosion of a new of, a, of what you are going to do and father we thank you lord in jesus mighty name come on amen and amen mm -hmm.